Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture on Bootstrap uh, for STAT 3150, Statistical Computing. The objectives for this lecture are, there's two of them, there's uh, using Bootstrap to estimate the bias and variance of an estimator, and then understanding how the empirical CDF is related to resampling techniques. So here's the motivation. In the previous lecture, we talked about jackknife, which is a resampling method. And the main idea was that we want to study the sampling distribution of an estimator uh, without making any assumption about the distribution of the data. And we saw that jackknife can be used to estimate both bias and standard error, but it doesn't always work. And the sample median is one such example. Bootstrap is a, sort of a generalization of uh, of jackknife, and it's another resampling method that takes a more direct approach to estimating the sampling distribution. <clears throat> and it works also in more general settings. So here's the, the setup. Let x1 up to xn be a random sample from some distribution f, capital F. And let's suppose we want to use this sample to compute an estimate theta hat of a population parameter theta. So, so far this is the, a similar setup as with jackknife. And imagine a situation now where we can generate b additional samples of size n from the same distribution. So you, think, you can think of this as repeating an experiment. We go back and we collect more data, but each sample has the same, um, the same size and also it comes from the same distribution. And so for each sample, we could compute an estimate theta hat little b, where b goes from one to capital B. So for each sample, we, we compute the estimator. So what we have now is b, so capital B, samples from the sampling distribution. And since we have samples from the sampling distribution, we could estimate any any quantity of interest. For example, the standard error, we could compute or estimate by taking the sample standard deviation of all of these uh, additional estimates. So that's that would be an ideal situation. And of course, we can't really generate these additional samples uh, in most circumstances. And even when we can, it's usually expensive. So Bootstrap tries to mimic this situation by sampling with replacement from the original sample. So it's creating new samples coming from the same distribution by resampling from the original data. And so what we get is that we generate a sample x1b up to xnb of size n, and we're sampling with replacement. So we won't get exactly the same data. We'll get some observations that are repeated that appear more than once. And, but for each of these resample, we can still compute theta hat b, and what we get is essentially uh, samples from the sampling distribution. And so we can compute the quantities of interest, like standard error, bias, etc. So this is the main idea of Bootstrap. We're mimicking the situation where we're actually able to go back and sample new data sets. So let's look at an example. Um, we'll look at the sample median, which, as I mentioned, doesn't, um, for which jackknife doesn't work. Uh, and we'll see that Bootstrap actually gives us a more accurate answer. We'll, we'll look at a, uh, at a toy example here. And we'll consider a population <clears throat> where uh, a finite population that we know uh, completely so that we can actually compute the median, the population median. So let's consider the population of all integers between 1 and 100. So we get 100 observations in the, pop in the full population. And so the median will be the average of the middle two observations. And so it's, we get 50.5, so the average of 50 and 51. So that's the population median. That's theta that we know exactly in this toy example. And so now let's generate B samples from the sampling distribution of the sample median. So what we need to do is sample um, B times from the population. So we get a certain sample of size N equals 10 in this case. And for each sample, we'll compute the sample median. 
And from that, we'll compute a standard deviation, which will be an unbiased estimate of the standard error of the sample median. And so if I go through the code here, I'm setting B is equal to 5,000. That's the number of samples we'll generate. N equals 10 will be the size of each sample. And then we, we can use replicate to replicate the same uh, code block. And so we'll first generate some underscore sample, which is a sample of the population uh, of size N. And here we're doing without replacement. Uh, that's the default behavior of the function sample. And once we've generated a sample of size n equals 10, we compute the median. So results will be a vector of size b equals 5,000, corresponding to 5,000 uh, medians. So it's a sample from the sampling distribution of the sample median. So if we compute its sample standard deviation, we get an unbiased estimate of the standard error of the sample median which is 13, right? So that's, that's the goal. We're trying to use jackknife and or bootstrap to get uh, an accurate estimate of this quantity. So keep that number in mind, 13. So now what we'll do is we'll take one sample. So th this is as if we were in the field, we measure uh, a certain number of observations and that's it. We don't repeat the experiment. So I'm just generating one sample here. And if I take its median, uh, you can see that it's quite low, actually, compared to the, the population median. So theta hat is 28.5, and we know that theta is 50.5. So in any case, let's use jackknife and see if we get an, a good estimate of the standard error, or uh, yeah, the standard error, or the standard deviation from the sample median. So remember, well, here it's the same code as what we've seen in the previous lecture. So theta hat is the sample median. And then what we need to do is recompute the sample median for each subsample we get by removing one observation at a time. So I'm pre-allocating memory, a vector of size n, and then I'm looping for i in 1 to n removing um, the, the ith observation and taking the median. So median of one sample bracket minus i uh, will be the median for that subsample. And I'm saving all of those values into theta underscore i. And then if I use the formula for standard error that we get from jackknife, um, we get uh, so if, so if I take the square root of n minus 1 times the average st uh, squared deviation, so qu squared difference, theta i minus the sample mean of the theta i's, I get 1.5. And we know this is too low. We know that the uh, real uh, standard deviation, or at least an unbiased estimate of it, is around 13. So this is way too small. And so already we can see here in this case, jackknife um, uh, doesn't work very well with the sample median. And actually, theoretically, we know that it doesn't work. So now let's try with bootstrap. Remember, bootstrap, what we do is we want to sample with replacement. And how can we do this? Well, <clears throat> if we use the function sample as usual, there is an extra parameter we can change we can change it replace equals true and this will sample with replacement so in this um, example code here I'm sampling from the integers from 1 to n remember n is 10 uh, and I'm sampling n times so the second argument is the the size of the output vector and then I say replace equals true and so you can see that uh, we get some repetitions so for example the number 4 appears four times number eight appears eight time, uh, two times. And of course, uh, as a result, there are some observations that we don't get in this particular sample with replacement. So we don't get uh, three, nine, six, etc. So that's, that's how we're going to sample with replacement. Um, how can we do this in our example? Well, if we go back, um, what we, um, we can use the replicate function again to get um, to repeat this resampling with replacement. And so we'll use replicate 5000. So we'll, we'll generate 
will mimic going back and generating 5,000 samples. And inside the code block, um, here I get, uh, what I'm doing is I'm sampling with replacement. So I can either resample directly the elements in the vector, the vector one sample, or alternatively, these two things are equivalent, I can also sample the indices of those elements in the vector. So this is what I'm doing here. So I'm doing sample n comma n comma replace equals true. This is the same code as the previous slide. And what this does is that it samples with replacement n integers uh, in the vector 1 to n. And so you can think of these as the indices of a vector of size n. And so now 1 underscore sample bracket indices will be uh, a, a, a resample of one sample with replacement. And so now I can compute the median, the sample median of that vector. And I repeat this 5,000 times. And so in the end, boot theta is a vector of size 5,000. Each element is the sample median that we get by doing sampling with replacement from the original data set, which is one sample. And now those are coming from the sampling distribution of the sample median. And so we can take the standard deviation and the standard deviation will be an estimate of the standard error. And what we get is something that's much closer to the true value, 8.14. It's still lower than uh, what we know is the uh, uh, unbiased estimate, 13, but it's much closer. And it probably has to do with the fact that the sample we got uh, was skewed uh, towards smaller values, right? We saw that the sample median for this particular sample was uh, 23.5 instead of uh, 50.5. But in any case, we still get uh, a closer value. And it is known that uh, Bootstrap works for the sample median. And we'll talk about how to do confidence intervals using Bootstrap in the next lecture. And you'll see that um, you could construct a confidence interval here, and you could uh, use that to assess whether this is, this is close enough to the actual value. Okay, so that was a toy example just to compare a jackknife and bootstrap. Now let's look at um, the, the data set that we looked at in the jackknife lecture. So we'll revisit the law data set. And remember that it contains information on the average LSAT and the average GPA scores for 15 law schools. And what we're interested in is the correlation between these two variables. And so first uh, we'll load the package bootstrap. And then we can compute the estimate of rho, the estimate of the correlation, using the sample correlation. This is the same thing we did in the previous lecture, and we get uh, 0.78. And now we can estimate the standard error using Bootstrap. And now you can see um, you can see why I was sampling the indices uh, in the previous slide. So first, I'll save uh, the number of rows into the variable n. And now I'm going to replicate 5,000 times the following code block. First, I'm sampling the indices with replacement. And so this code is the same as before. Indices is sample of n comma n comma replace equals true. And so we get a sample of size n with replacement of the integers between 1 and n. And now, what you need to remember is that we want to keep the correlation structure, right? Uh, one observation is a pair of values. It's both an LSAT score and a GPA score. And so what we want to do is we want to keep the correlation structure. And when we're sampling with replacement, we want to be sampling uh, each row of the data set with replacement. And so this is why I'm sampling the indices. And so now I can compute the sample correlation for this particular um, subset. And so I get correlation of law dollar sign LSAT bracket indices. And then that's the correlation with this and the same thing for the GPA. And so at the end of the day, boot row is a vector of size 5000, where each observation or each element of the vector is a sample correlation 
for a resample of the original data that we got uh, by sampling with replacement. And so again, you can think of this as the sample from the sampling distribution of the sample correlation. And so if I take the standard deviation of this, I get an estimate of the standard error for the, um, the sample correlation. And again, I'll, I'll point out that I'm not dividing by square root of n here. The dividing by square root of n is already built into uh, my estimate here of the sample standard deviation. And what I get is 0.13 or 0.14, right? Um, and you can compare this to the estimate we got using jackknife. Okay, so that was a couple examples on how to use Bootstrap. Now let's talk a little bit about the empirical CDF. And, and in particular, I want to make the link between the empirical CDF and Bootstrap. So first of all, uh, let's recall that the empirical CDF of a sample x1 up to xn is the CDF of a discrete distribution whose support is the data points that we collected from that sample. So the empirical CDF depends or is conditional on a particular sample and where each point has mass uh, 1 over n, right? If you have repetition, so if x1 is equal to x2, for example, um, then that particular value would get a mass of 2 over n, um, right? So the idea is that we, we get a mass that's um, uh, corresponding to the frequency or the proportion of observations in the sample that are exactly equal to those observations. So mathematically what we can write is the following. So the, the empirical CDF at little x is 1 over n times the sum of all of these indicator functions, xi being less than little x. So that's the definition. And why do we care? Well, <clears throat> we already argued that we can't easily generate more samples from the actual distribution capital F. So what Bootstrap is doing effectively is instead generating samples from the empirical distribution. So sampling with replacement is the same as sampling from the empirical CDF. Uh, and I encourage you to look at this statement and convince yourself that this is true, uh, because this is key to understanding how Bootstrap works. And so since um, the empirical CDF converges to the actual distribution, the actual CDF, uh, we can often translate the convergence in terms of the bootstrap estimates. And so this, this is sort of the beginning of the theory of bootstrap, uh, which again, we don't have time to cover, um, but I, I put some, some extra material on UMLearn if you want to have a look at it. And so here's sort of a, a graphical summary of what's going on. So in the real world, we have a distribution F we sample uh, x1 up to xn from that distribution, and then we compute theta hat, which is some function, right? It's a statistic, so it's a function of the data, and it's a function g. What happens in the bootstrap world is that we do something similar, but using the empirical CDF. So from the empirical CDF, we generate a sample x1b to xnb, and we get a different estimate, theta hat b, by using the same function g, but now on the new data set, the new sample x1b to xnb. So that's, that's what's happening here. Um, okay, so that was the empirical CDF. And now just for the sake of completeness, let's have a quick look at how to estimate bias using Bootstrap which was the, the original motivation for jackknife. Um, how do we do this? Well, actually, we do this um, very simply. So let theta hat b be the estimates computed using the bootstrap samples. right? So we get one for each um, bootstrap sample. And let theta bar be the sample mean of all of those bootstrap samples. Then the bootstrap estimate of the bias is simply given by the, the, well, theta bar minus theta hat. So effectively what this is, is the sample mean of the bootstrap samples minus 
the observation, or sorry, the estimate we got from the original observations. So theta bar minus theta hat. That's it. Uh, the reason why this, um, this works is that theta bar is an unbiased estimate of theta. Right? It's the sample, uh, so it's, or it's an um, unbiased estimate of the expected value of theta, of theta hat. And so this is why theta bar minus theta hat is uh, an estimate of the bias itself. Um, so let's look at an example quickly. Uh, we're going to use the same data set, so the law data set. We're going to generate 5,000 bootstrap samples again. Uh, and of course, this is arbitrary. You could pick a smaller number, a larger number. 5,000 usually works well. And then um, I'm just repeating the code we had earlier. So I'm generating all of those bootstrap replicates. And then I'm, I'm using the formula. Uh, so the, the, we're using the sample mean of the bootstrap samples minus the original correlation, the original estimate. And again, this is our bootstrap estimate of the bias. And you can see that we get a negative uh, 0 0.004, which, was, uh, which is a bit larger, I guess, or smaller in absolute value than what we got for jackknife. Um, but just as with jackknife, we can use this estimate of the bias to de-bias our original estimate. And so if we do row hat minus the bias, we get an, um, a de-bias estimate of the sample correlation, so 0.78 here. Okay, so final remarks. Um, so when should we use jackknife versus bootstrap? In some way, jackknife is an approximation of the bootstrap. And so as a consequence, bootstrap is almost always uh, better than jackknife. It's, it's, um, it's what people typically use uh, in real life. They will use bootstrap before jackknife. Uh, but I guess you could argue that for small sample sizes, sometimes jackknife can be computationally more efficient. Uh, for the simple reason that jackknife requires n plus 1 computations, and then bootstrap requires b plus 1 computations, where b is usually at least 1,000. So if you have, for example, a very small sample size, so n is equal to 10 or n is equal to 20, uh, and each computation takes a lot of time, uh, then you may actually be computationally more efficient using jackknife. Uh, but of course, you have to be careful because jackknife doesn't always work. Um, so in, in that sense, bootstrap is still um, probably a better choice. Um, bootstrap in particular performs better when the sampling distribution is skewed, which is something we'll explore in the next lecture. Um, but this is, uh, this is the end for this particular lecture.